Okay, lesson number two in our unit deals with the multiplication rule. If you just kind of glance at the targets, you can see this really has to do with being able to count. I can count properly with the multiplication rule. I can count properly when repetition is allowed and not allowed. And I can count properly when restrictions are involved. So basically, this is going to be a rule that's going to allow us to count possibilities. As we saw in lesson number one, sometimes it's very easy to list the possible outcomes. We were able to make a little chart for tossing a coin. We were maybe, maybe uh, we made a table for rolling uh, the dice. Not always so easy to make a table and count up all the possibilities, especially if you're talking about a really large number. So we need other rules and other ways to go about this. Uh, here is the multiplication rule. Right? If one event can occur in m ways and another event can occur in n ways, the number of ways that both events can occur is m times n, which is easy enough. Multiplication rule. So let's see how that actually operates on kind of a simple scenario here. A deli offers three types of meats, ham, turkey, and beef, and two types of bread, wheat and rye. It says make a possibility tree showing the total number of different choices you have for a meat sandwich. So we're looking for all the different possibilities, right? If we were going to compute a probability, this would be our bottom number. So for example, we could start and say we have ham, turkey, and beef. If I choose ham, then my choices are to choose wheat or rye. But if I choose turkey, my choices are wheat or rye. And if I choose beef, my choices are wheat or rye. So that's one possibility for a tree. I could have also started with the bread. I could have said my first choice is to choose a bread, wheat or rye. And then if I choose wheat, I can choose ham, I can choose turkey, or I can choose beef. And if I choose rye, I can choose ham, I can choose turkey, or I can choose beef. Right. So think about how this tells us the number of possibilities, right? There's a possible sandwich, ham and wheat, or ham and rye. Turkey and wheat, turkey and rye. Beef and wheat, beef and rye. So you can see we had six possibilities. We would also get that in this second table. Wheat and ham, wheat and turkey, wheat and beef rye and ham, rye and turkey, rye and beef. Right? So if we simply count up the final line of our tree, that's going to tell us how many different choices we have, which is where we get the six. It says now use the multiplication rule to find the total number of choices you have for a meat sandwich. So our choices, we had to choose a meat and we had to choose a bread. And we want the number of ways we can do both. So there were three ways to choose meats two ways to choose bread. That's another way we could have come up with that six. Okay, and that's a real simple example. We're going to try a few here now that are a little more interesting. Oh, I like to do a lot with license plates. It says, suppose a standard Illinois license plate consists of three digits followed by four letters. So let's put some blanks, three digits. I'm going to put digit, 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 and then four letters have to come next. Letter, letter. All right. How many different license plates are possible if repetition is allowed? So I guess we have to ask ourselves, what are the possibilities for digits in a license plate? Well, it's not nine, because don't forget we have to include zero. So if I look at the number zero through nine, that's actually 10 different digits I have the opportunity to put there. Now it says repetition is allowed. So I could put any one of the digits 0 through 9 in this first spot. And if repetition is allowed, I can still put any one of the digits 0 through 9 in the second spot. So I still have 10 possibilities for that second spot. The third spot, I can repeat either one of these digits. So I still have all 0 through 9 possibilities to choose from for that spot. We know by my multiplication rule, right, we learned that if I want the probability that all of these events occur, I'm going to multiply them. So now I'm on to letters. Think back about the alphabet. There are 26 letters in the alphabet. 
but I can repeat those letters, so I still have 26 choices for the next spot, 26 for the next one, and 26 for the last one. All right. You can see we certainly would not want to make a table and try to list out all these possible ones. Right? Uh, you could multiply all that together. We're not going to do that right now. You could just do that on your calculator. It's obviously going to be a very large number. All right, let's talk about how this would look different if repetition is not allowed. So let's set up the same scenario. I have three digits followed by four letters. So this has to be a digit, and these four then have to be letters in that order. If I begin, I have to choose a digit. Zero through nine are the digits I have to choose from. So there are 10 possible choices. But now it says repetition is not allowed. So I've used up one of the digits. I don't know which digit it is, but I've used one of these. So now there are no longer 10 digits to choose from. Since I've used one, there are now nine. Multiplying again, my multiplication rule. But now I've used two digits. I cannot repeat either one of these digits in this third blank. So since there were 10 originals, but I've used up two of them, I now have eight to choose from for that third spot. I'm moving on to letters. I haven't used any letters yet, so I have 26 to choose from for the first letter. But now I've used up one of the alphabet letters. So now I only have 25 letters to choose from because I cannot repeat. So now I've used up two letters. If there are 26 letters in the alphabet and I've used up two, that leaves me 24. Now I've placed three letters, so 26 take away those three letters leaves me 23 letters to choose from. I could multiply all that out, get myself an answer. I'll let you do that on your own. Okay, part C. How many different license plates are possible if repetition is not allowed? Okay, the first digit must be even and the last two letters must be G-O in that order, All right? So we're at this target now, if you remember from the beginning, I can count properly when restrictions are involved. So we've talked about this uh, repetition and no repetition. Now we're taking that and we're throwing in two restrictions. The first one that the first digit be even and then here the last two letters have to be G and O in that order. All right, it says in general always perform the most restrictive steps first. So we are going to start with these restrictions. Let's set it up again. I have three digits followed by four letters. All right, let's start with the digits. Here's the restriction on the digits. The first one must be even. So this one must be even means it could be 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. Those are the possibilities. That's 5. So I have 5 choices for that first digit. All right. Now remember, this is key here. Repetition is not allowed. Okay. So there are 10 digits to choose from but I've used one. There are no other restrictions on this one. So I put either 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8 right in this first spot. So if I take that one out of my choice of digits, I'm now down to 9, right? And I have no other restrictions. It doesn't have to be even, odd. I just can't have a repetition. I can't use whatever I put there. Now I'm on the third digit, right? There were 10 digits, of course, to choose from, but I've used two of them. I put a digit here and I put a digit here. There's no other restriction. So 10 digits, getting rid of the two that I've used, since I cannot repeat, leaves me with eight choices. So that's how I handle the digits. Now let's jump to the letters. I'm going to go right to the restrictions first, right? The restriction says the last two letters must be G and O in that order. So this one must be G and this one must be O. That means I only have one choice for that letter and one choice for that letter. All right, now let's back up. I have to fill in these and I have to remember I cannot repeat so there are 26 letters in the alphabet. Of those 26 letters, I have 26 letters. I've used two of them. 
I used the G and I've used the O. So if I have 26 and I've used two, that leaves me 24 letters to choose from. And this one right here, there were 26 letters, but I've now used the G and the O, plus I've used one here, so I've actually used three of the letters and I cannot repeat, so that would mean I'd only have 23 left to choose from. If you multiplied all that together, you'd have the number of different possibilities considering those restrictions. All right, let's flip the page. Here's another example involving restrictions. These are usually the toughest ones. Each of the seven dwarfs wants to kiss Snow White before they go off to work. It is decided that Doc or Happy will always give the first kiss. So this sounds like a restriction right here I need to keep track of. And Grumpy will never give the final kiss. Given these conditions, in how many ways can the seven dwarves line up to kiss Snow White? All right, since each dwarf can only give one kiss, we know this also implies that there's no repetition. The dwarf isn't getting back in line. All right, so let's line them up here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, let's, these are the, this is the lineup. All right, so let's start with our restrictions. This one says Doc or Happy will always give the first kiss. So this one has to be Doc or it has to be happy. That means I have two choices for that spot. Grumpy will never give the final kiss. All right, so let's now come down here to Grumpy, right? A lot of people want to put six in this blank, all right? Think carefully before you put six in that blank. Haven't we already placed one of the dwarves? Either Doc or Happy is in the first spot. So when I go to choose this, there are seven dwarfs. I've used one because that's in the first spot right here, right? And it cannot be grumpy. So if there are seven to choose from and I've used one and I can't use grumpy, that means I actually have five choices for that last one. So what most people forget on that one is that they've placed a dwarf right here. We're not eliminating both. I didn't put both dwarves there. So for example, if I chose Doc, Happy still figures into these possibilities. Or if I chose Happy, Doc still figures in down here. All right, so one is out because of this, and then I can't include Grumpy. Those are the two that I'm eliminating. Now remember, I can't repeat because I've already got one of the dwarves here and one here. So of the seven, I've used two. So here I have seven, but I've used two, one at the front, one at the back. So that leaves me five possibilities. So now I have seven, but I've used three, so that leaves me four, and then I'd have three, and then I'd have two, and that would only leave me one left to put in that final spot. Okay, These are really tricky, so you might want to go back and think about that one and listen to that one again. All right, uh, here's another example with roads. We have three roads from city A to city B. So let's draw three separate roads. And then there are five roads from city B to city C. So one, two, three, four, five. How many different routes are there from A to B and then from B to C? So let's think of this as two cases from A to B and then we have to get from B to C. So I'm going to use my multiplication rule. Well there are three routes from A to B and there are five routes from B to C. So that leaves me a total of 15 routes. How many different routes are there from A to B, and then B to C, and then C to B, and B back to A? So if we break this into categories, we have A to B, and then we're going from B to C, and then we're going from C back to B, and then we're going from B back to A. So we're looking at each one of these as a separate case. And then we're going to multiply all those choices together to come up with the total number of possibilities. We're counting all the different possibilities. So routes from A to B, I can see that. That's three. Routes from B to C is five. Right? Routes from C back to B, there are still five routes. And then routes from B back to A, there are still three. 
So if you multiply all that out, you would have your answer. That comes out to be 225. All right. Now we're going to look at the same problem on this next one on part C, but notice what we've added here. No road is traversed twice. Traversed means traveled on twice. So I'm going to write this down again, A to B, and then I'm going from B to C, and then from C back to B, and then from B back to A. All right, so when I start out, I haven't been on the road at all. So from A to B, I still have three choices. But let's in our diagram mark one of those choices off, because I've now traveled on one of those roads. Now I'm going from B to C. There seem to be five choices left. Let's mark off the one that I drive on. All right? Now, remember, I cannot travel the road twice. So now I'm at C, and I'm traveling back to B. There were five choices, but I traveled on one of those roads. So now I only have four left to choose from. And now I'm at B, I have to get back to A. I can't use the road I came on, so I only have two choices left. So my total number of possibilities now is down to 120. If you can use the same roads twice, you have a lot more opportunities there. OK, last example. A restaurant offers 10 pasta entries and 8 chicken entries each customer chooses one entree. If a customer chooses a pasta entry, then they also get to choose one of the four soups. If a customer chooses the chicken, they also get to choose one of the four soups and one of the three side pastas. How many different possible meals can a customer choose at the restaurant? So it says, hint, find the number of pasta meals and the number of chicken meals and add them together. So see this bolded and here? That and, since we have two different possibilities, either a pasta meal or a chicken meal, that and implies that we are going to add those two options together. So let's start with pasta. If we get pasta, we get to pick a soup. So a pasta meal involves a pasta and it involves a soup. All right. There are 10 possibilities for pastas, right? And it says there were four soups to choose from. So if I'm picking a pasta meal, 10 different pastas, and each one of those I can choose one of four different soups, that means there's 40 different pasta meals you could come up with. Let's go over here to chicken meals. When I get a chicken meal, I also get a soup and a side pasta. Okay, And there are three side pastas. So let's mark this down. I get to choose chicken then I get to choose a soup, and then I get to choose, let's call it a side pasta. All right, so there were eight chicken choices. There were four soups to choose from. And then here it said there were three side pastas to choose from. All right, if you multiply all of those together, eight times four times three, you get 96 different chicken dinners you could put together. So there are 40 different pasta meals and 96 different chicken meals. I'm then going to add those up. And so the total number of different meals you could have at this restaurant would be 136 based on different combinations of soups or soups and side pastas.